my dream car is a Corvette, basically Chevy Corvette, simple enough. Regardless, I was saving for that. And I was like, this is definitely a great opportunity to get into the market because all the prices are low. So I essentially stopped saving for that car and basically all the other cars that I was thinking about getting and just put basically all my money into the stock market. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dollar Mike back at again with another video. And if you guys couldn't tell from that clip that just played at the beginning of the video, you probably noticed that I'm actually in a different video that's not my own video. And that video is a CNBC video. So yes, I have been featured on CNBC talking about Robin Hood and I kind of just want to do a reaction video of it. I haven't actually watched the video in full yet. I watched about a minute and a half because I wanted to do a reaction video for you guys, but I watched about a minute and a half of it already. So I already know like a minute and a half worth of the video, but it's a 30 minute video this probably won't be a 30 minute video because i'll probably chop it up a little bit but either way i want to do a full reaction of me watching myself cnbc style talking about robin hood with other robin hood investors that's kind of just starting out investing in everything basically because that's what they reached out to us for so if you're interested in any of that just sit back relax because that's what we're doing in today's video i'm super excited so thankful for cnbc reaching out to me and having me come on cnbc basically to talk about robin hood so i'm i'm mad excited i've been doing this for a little bit under what two years now so let's just get into it let's watch me reacting to myself dollar mike on cnbc let's do it let's go let's get started let's go let's see what we got here my dream car is a corvette basically chevy corvette simple enough regardless i was saving for that and i was like this is definitely a great opportunity to get into the market because all the prices are low so it's true, it's true. i essentially stopped saving for that car and basically all the other cars that i was thinking about getting and just put basically all my money into the stock market and never look at the market until march of this year i figure now is as good a time as ever to start investing i don't have that much money saved up so there's not as much on the line Robinhood has really become synonymous with millennial retail traders it's free all of the major brokerage firms have followed Robinhood with zero commissions Robinhood has brought a whole new generation of investors into the market the iphone toady millennials who actually like owning individual stocks. Robinhood getting its fourth major venture capital investment this year. Real quick, Robinhood is popping. I'm letting you guys know. I mean, hey, it has its faults. We can talk about its Robinhood's faults all day, but like I said, it just completely changed how investing went, how investing is today. So I'm, I mean, get, get some mad props from me. All, that's all I'm saying. It might not be the best platform to everyone because it's not the best platform for everyone, but Either way, Robin Hood is out here, but let's just keep watching. It's 30 minutes, and I'm going to have to clip a lot of this up. So I don't think you're going to stay here for 30, 40 minutes and watch this. But hey, you know, you might. Either way, let's go. With it. Robin Hood is simple. I mean, that's it's the simplest way to say it. It is. It's simple. Robin super is simple. What I consider my play money. I started using it a Turn lot it down more a little bit. recently during the pandemic. I don't know if it was out of boredom or just I saw an opportunity. Their whole mission has been to make it accessible, to make it easy. To True. make it fun, they make it sort of gamified, which has also been a criticism of Robin Hood. Zero dollar commissions are not cost free. Gets revenue behind the scenes from what's known as payment for order flow. We very are true, very true. Tonight after 20 Even though it's a Robin free app, trader. even though Robin Hood is a free app, um, yes, you they still make money through the payment over overflow. They'll explain it in this video from what I can tell, but yeah, we'll get into it. So Robin Hood started in 2013. It was founded by... Vlad Tenev and Baiju bought their mission, as they call it, was democratizing finance and making things like trading more accessible. They blazed the trail. Um, they were the ones Weeble. that said Weeble is also another trading platform. I use Weeble for not day trading, but for penny stocks in particular. I think Weeble is a great app, um, just like Robinhood. I think they have way more features than Robinhood, and they're also free. So make sure you check that link out down below if you want to sign up for Weeble because they're great as well. There's nothing wrong with Weeble, but like a lot of people said, like I said in this video, and like a lot of people said, uh, Robinhood is just super simple, straight to the point. It's less like Weeble as far as simplicity, but like like I said, Weeble offers a lot of features that Robinhood simply doesn't. So if you're an uh, experienced trader or anything like that, obviously I would recommend Weeble over Robinhood or even other platforms. But hey, if you're just starting out, Robinhood is the way to go. I just, I, that's how I see it. It's just that simple. Zero commission is a real thing. Uh, they are the ones that said we can make a business, a profitable business, out of offering customers free access to the capital markets. Robinhood turned the online brokerage industry on its head by offering free trading. But if the trading is free, how does Robinhood actually make money? Robinhood doesn't charge customers on the front end. It earns revenue behind the scenes through what's called payment for order flow. 
the retail broker like Meritrade, E-Trade, Schwab, or Robinhood, they'll route the individual's trade to a what we call a wholesale market maker. Two examples of the biggest are Citadel and Virtu. Robinhood makes money because when they route that trade, the payment that goes back, a certain amount of it will go to Robinhood. They have this buzz and this brand loyalty and social media following true. that does not exist at any other brokerage. It doesn't. It's been it's one true. of the ways that they have gotten the snowball effect. People simply like Robinhood more than they like other platforms. It's that simple. I personally feel that way. Not fully. Obviously, I'm not loyal really to any company. You shouldn't be loyal to anyone, especially these companies. You shouldn't be loyal to any of these companies because they're just taking your money at the end of the day. But, I mean, overall, like I said before, Robinhood is just a solid platform to get started with stocks. And, I mean... People that like something tend to be loyal to whatever they like. Even if you like you like a certain car or whatever, you may be loyal to that brand. It might not be the best thing to do because there's probably better cars out there for you. But that's just how people just re relate to stuff. I mean, it's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not the best way to look at things. But hey, it is what it is. It's just human nature. So hey. A Robin. I hope yeah. retail investors, meanwhile, have doubled their trading activity during the pandemic. I think we are in a perfect storm for trading and really it started last October uh, when we moved to zero on commission rates. And we saw the engagement start then and market volatility in February and early. I'm telling you this competition, if, if Robinhood didn't have zero dollar commissions, then these other companies would never have made zero dollar commissions, AKA saving you money when you go and trade. So competition is good for everyone. We always need competition. It's out there. We need it. I'm just letting you guys know that's that's just the way it is. We just need it. It's that simple for every everything. We need competition on every aspect of life. Cause there you go. You get stuff better. We get stuff better, obviously. So yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> I think one of the reasons why I decided to throw so much money to the market, uh, late March, early April, stocks had just fallen Same so here. much in value. Same here. They, they became attainable for. Everyone. Like last guy like myself maybe had a, a few thousand in savings that I was willing to invest. Yep. I'm not sure if it's Same like exact thing for just me. pandemic related, but I think that the market has just been really volatile uh, in general. So I've been kind of trading because I think it's like a short term gain here and there. And also I just had more time during quarantine to like actually pay attention to it. I guess I could say I was afraid because I didn't really want to lose money and I knew the stock market wasn't really the best thing for somebody that didn't know what they were doing. Once the coronavirus and everything was starting to happen, I saw stock prices lower, so I definitely wanted to take advantage of the opportunity of buying in low and trying to sell high. The game tonight has been postponed. You are all safe. Yeah, that was the scene uh, after the NBA postponed a game between the Jazz and Thunder. Uh, shortly afterward, the league suspended its season indefinitely. The sports gambling has been, uh, you know, pretty non-existent. Uh, so some of the more active betting types, you know, are no doubt turning their attention to it. I didn't think about it. In the, from the start, I didn't think about it like that. I forgot about, I mean, I know about sports betting. Obviously, I'm invested in a sports betting ETF. B E T Z bets. So if you're not if you're not invested in that, make sure you check it out. It's pretty cool. But either way, I didn't even think about that. Like a lot of people that sports bet simply didn't sports bet anymore because there was no sports. So they probably had to get that little sports bet high they have somewhere else, and that somewhere else is the stock market. So definitely, they could have made a lot of money, lost a lot of money. That's just a part of investing in the stock market. But that's pretty cool. I didn't even think about it like that. But yeah, cool stuff. So you know me, you know I like to gamble on sports, right? You knew that. There it is right there. Sports are gone, so I've moved totally. to day trading. <laughs> I have margin. I've moved I have to day this. trading. Very dangerous, by the way. Day trading. Check. Day trading is very dangerous. Um, you need a decent amount of money to day trade. If you really want to day trade, you need like $25,000 in your investment account. You need to keep that money in your investment account to day trade basically freely. But um, you can day trade with less than $25,000, but you only can day trade up to three or four times within a five day span. So within a week, you only can day trade three or four times and then you're automatically cut out. You can't do it anymore. So over $25,000 in your investment account, you have to keep that amount of money in there or over that to day trade freely. But yeah, um, I day traded. I have a video talking about day trading and everything where I did it and I made a lot of money. And I also lost a lot of money day trading, and it's not really my cup of tea. And you can make a lot of money doing it, it's just a lot more risk, that's all. But everything involves risk. Everything investing involves risk, so. Here is what I know. 
I have 90,000 shares of ABT right now, and I'm down 20 grand in a, in a whisper. David Portnoy is founder of Barstool Sports. About a few weeks ago, he decided to take take a crack at day trading. He put $3 million into an E-Trade account, and he's currently down about $600,000. <laughs> he is sort of emblematic of this moment of day trader. Now, if you have money to toss around like that, sure. You know, if you got $3 million, it'll be like, right, I'm going to put it here. I'll be good. If you don't have $3 million to toss around or however much to toss around, then don't toss it around. But if you got extra money, toss it around. Go. I mean, what are you going to lose? I mean, well, you're going to lose your money if you, you could, but you're also going to make a lot of money. So it's just risk. Like I said, it's just risk. It's up to you. The everyman. So many people are at home and they are day trading their accounts now. So they see a little bit of themselves in you he has criticized warren buffett for selling the airlines for example he bought the airlines at a certain week and did really well alaska airlines up 17 percent boeing up 13 percent carnival up 16 percent delta up seven and a half percent what is what do you do if you listen to old man buffett get out on the airlines idiot <laughs> <laughs> warren buffett is not an idiot <laughs> He's probably one of the best investors uh, in our time. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm not saying the Barstool's president, what's his name again? Uh, I'm not saying he got lucky, but he probably got lucky. I mean, if you're going to buy everything at the bottom of the bottom of the market, then obviously you're going to make a decent amount of money when it goes up 17%, 7%, 8%. Like my portfolio in particular, I bought in the market um, that like the dead bottom basically of the whole crash and everything. And I mean, I put it like 2000 in and I'm up about 30%. So yeah, I'm up about 30%, but I'm only up about 30% because the market crashed so much and I got in at a good time. That's more of luck than I think. I mean, it's more of luck and, you know, timing rather than, you know, this a bad investment. You know, I don't really know. But Warren Buffett, I mean, I think he made the right decision. I mean, he needs or he wants the money now. And the way it was working, he wasn't going to get it. The airline industry won't be back on its feet for years. So, I mean, he probably saw it as like, I don't really need to be invested this much heavily into the airline industry if it wasn't going to be up that much. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I personally like airlines. I personally bought some. But like I said, for me personally... I'm going to invest in the airline industry and not have to worry about it for years because I don't plan on selling for years. If you plan on selling in a couple months, you might not be up in the airline industry. And I mean, I see what he's saying, but yeah, Warren Buffett's not an idiot. <laughs> like, let's let's not do that. But yeah, either way, let's keep going. But certain only eight minutes in, like, really well, so it's hard to see if there's actually an effect in terms of him buying or touting a stock and then it going in one direction. Seven seconds, 154. Let's go, 10598. Six figure days only. Six figure days only. Six figure only. days only. I mean, I, I feel that. Six figure days only. <laughs> I started using the app uh, kind of out of wanting to learn something new and boredom at the same time. We started working from home. I looked at Weeble. It wasn't really user friendly for me. And then um, I looked at Charles Schwab. I looked at Thinkorswim. So then I landed on uh, Robinhood. And it was the most user-friendly. It was the one that I understood. And it was more associated to a game, so to speak. I'm a big fantasy football player, fantasy basketball. Love it. It was similar to that. It was like using an app on your phone versus like... Real quick, um, what he has said, yeah, um, I use other apps. I have other apps. I have other investment apps. I still use them, but like I said, Robinhood is just, it was just that simple. And yeah, I've seen some of the comments saying like, I mean, these other apps aren't that hard, but like when you really don't know anything about investing, I mean, I get, you know how many DMs that I get or people just asking me in general about investing that they just don't understand, they don't get it. And I explain it, like I, I even talk to people where I fully sit down with them, explain it for like 20, 30 minutes and they still have like really basic questions. There's nothing wrong with having questions because you should have questions if you don't understand something but they'll have really basic questions they don't they don't get it they don't get it and Robinhood makes it so simple and other apps just don't so people don't bother and i immediately went and bought coca-cola stock and then uh put 50 dollars in and then i went and bought live nation because i saw mark cuban do it and then i looked at that app i would probably say 100 times like every yeah i check my <laughs> 15 to check my minutes, account all the time until about four o'clock multiple the times a day Robinhood really unique is that it's incredibly efficient in the way that it operates because we're from the ground up a technology company people don't expect money things to be easy it is easy yeah. to use it is frictionless don't. it is fun and i think that incongruity of expectations is part of what makes it really work it's um 
it's not your usual financial app. It's different. You know, the ads is how I make money to provide you guys with more videos. So if you could watch those ads, that'd be great. But CNBC, they're good. You know, they don't they don't need my money. They're they're all right. They're straight. Either way, I'm gonna have to watch the ad anyway because I can't skip it. So hey, but we're back at it. Let's get let's see what we got. Investors who favor the online uh, trading system Robinhood got a very bad surprise yesterday. The platform didn't work at all. Uh, on the best day for the Dow in more than a decade. The website was down. Users couldn't access yep. the app. I personally wasn't using Robin. I made a whole video about this, actually. I made a whole video talking about how Robinhood crashed. Um, it was down for like two days, basically. People couldn't do anything. You couldn't buy. You couldn't sell. You couldn't trade. You couldn't invest. You couldn't take your money out. Nothing like that. Nothing was happening. You couldn't do it. Um, I wasn't using Robinhood at the time. I made a video talking about, is, is Robinhood done for? And here I am using Robinhood. But either way... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's unacceptable. That can't happen. If it happens again, best believe I will move my money somewhere else. It hasn't happened to me personally, so I'm like, okay, that, that was their chance. Once I was able to get past that, I invested and haven't had any problems with blackouts or anything like that. I think that... Real quick, that's also something to note. Um, me personally and him as well, um, I'm invested in a way where if the market crashes or goes up crazy... I really don't plan on selling. The money's already there. The money's going to sit there. I wasn't going to take the money out anyway. But for some people that may need that money that day, obviously Robinhood might not be the platform of choice for you because, I mean, you don't know. These blackout dates could keep happening. Um, it hasn't really happened since, but, I mean, it could. It could happen again. Who knows? I mean, they said it was due to the amount of users on the app and everything. I'm like, that's fine, but, like, these other platforms aren't having these issues. They've been around a lot longer, but... I mean, you guys got to, like I said, that's Robin Hood's fault. They got to get on that or people are just going to leave. It's that simple. So if it happens again, I'll probably still be okay. But a lot of people, I can see a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm done. This is it. Especially if you have a lot of money in there. So based on that, without any numbers behind it, anecdotally, you might think that Robin Hood would see a wave of customer losses or some sort mm -hmm. of attrition. The exact the opposite, opposite happened. Yeah, yeah they skyrocketed. March. It makes and no sense, but new accounts this year alone. So you wow. have seen some individuals leave, but overwhelmingly Robinhood went the opposite direction. We tracked millions of app downloads. I mean, the, which, it's know, wild because track. it's wild because that's actually when I started investing. After the Robinhood crash had happened and everything, that's when I started investing. That's why I was like, okay, let me get serious about Robinhood. I already had the app, but let me just get serious about it because I mean the market was terribly down. So I was like, this is perfect. Let me jump in. I and mean, I did just that. Invested like two thousand dollars or a thousand dollars to start out. Then I was like, eh, let's just invest another two thousand. So I tossed another two thousand for my savings in there, and we've been up ever since. And we're gonna keep going up. So make sure you stay tuned to all my Robin Hood videos to see how up we go. But I mean, we're not gonna go down. That's it's unacceptable. It's not happening. Robin is what I consider my playbook. I will put money into it. I will work to grow it to to reach a goal that I have, so I can take that money and buy my wife a new car whenever she needs one or buy myself a new computer or a new yeah for real yeah i have no idea i have no idea what i'm going to do with this robin hood money or any of my investment money in the future besides my retirement savings and um, my retirement investments but as far as robin hood uh m1 finance webull all the money i make from robin hood all these other platforms investing um i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do so i i consider it the same way i consider it as my play money because it's extra money i have it doesn't hurt me. Um, if I if I lost all that money, I, I would be upset if I lost my whole nine thousand in my account. Now I would be upset, but would I be broke or bad off or not be able to afford anything? No. I mean, I can do everything now. So um, it's just there. It's just there growing. It's just there growing. I have no purpose for it yet. I mean, I might use it to buy, like he said, like a house maybe or a new car or something like that in the future. I don't know. But I mean, I think it's a good way to look at it. It's my play money, but it's not like also mentioned before it's not a game but i mean i treat it as one because it's like i said i don't i don't need the money it's okay but that's also why you shouldn't invest your money that you need because if you're investing money that you actually need and you lose it then you're kind of out of luck if you invest money that you have that you don't actually need then you're okay i mean me instead of going out and spending 20 dollars on some food that i really don't need i'm just buying it because i just want to waste the money basically uh I can do that or I can put it in that $20 in Robinhood and make another 20 from it. I mean, it's just that simple. It's more for the fun side of it. I enjoy it. It's fun. I do enjoy it. It can get really easy. To it's frustrating when the market's down. It's also I amazing when the market's up. Like it's fun. Like here's like a limit. It's like when I walk into a casino, I give myself $200. I agree. I don't think it gamifies the market. I feel like you can, all these investment platforms are the same way. All these investment platforms are the same way. I don't feel like it gamifies the market. I feel like that's your personal 
choice on how you look at it. I don't see it as a game, but I have fun with it. I don't think it's a game. I mean, it's no difference. I, they, they all let you do the same thing. They all let you buy and sell stocks, options, all this other kind of stuff. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's personally how you view it, but yeah, it is what it is. But its customer service has also been criticized. Yeah, customer service. Time and a lack of phone support. Yeah. After a little while. <sighs> customer service is garbage. Uh, I never even used it, but I just know it's garbage. Um... I know it has to be garbage. I they need to have phone support in the future. I'm telling you, if this if I if my account really reaches the goals that I wanted to reach, I won't have the money in Robinhood forever. This is temporary. So they can make money off me from now, but I promise you I will be leaving. So if they don't get customer service, that's I mean that's a number one thing that every company should have. If you don't have best the best customer service for your customers, then why would I want to be a customer? You know? Ooh, phone number. They have basically no way of reaching out to them except through Email. So my customer I don't have time to wait for an email, bro. Almost ten thousand dollars invested. I don't have time to wait for an email. I need to call someone right now. I literally just dealt with this with my retirement account at my job. I had to call three different I have four fingers. Three different brokerages. I had to call three different brokerages and they all picked up within ten minutes. That's great. Robinhood, they don't even have a number. Are you serious? Come on. Like, no, come on, come on. I'm not doing this. Okay, well, posted something at Robinhood support that I was having some issues or whatever. And then I got a. I should not have to read out, reach out to Robinhood on Twitter. Which was great. Because then they said, <laughs> Are you serious? Address, Twitter? We'll keep Get out of here. Robinhood spokesperson told CNBC that they found the best approach to reaching customers quickly is through email. Over time, they plan to build additional ways to. The best way to reach someone, the best way to reach a customer is through email. Let that sink in. An email. You know how you know how old emails are? I mean, I guess you know you can call someone. That's pretty old as well. But I'm just saying in general, an email. That's the best way to reach someone. Are you serious? You have people's personal information. You have people invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in this app. And you're telling me an email is the best way for you to reach them. Okay, bruh okay like i said i love robin hood but like customer service is garbage and if that's something you really care about like i personally do then i wouldn't personally recommend it the only reason i'm still in it is because of the ease of the use of the platform i'm telling you once i reach these certain goals the money's gone i'm moving somewhere else it's that simple because i'm not going to be bothered if they're not going to even bother to care communicate with users and they've more than doubled the size of their customer support team this year they need to quadruple it like doubling it's not good enough if, they, if you weren't allowed to call them before and they had like triple the users in like a couple of months then why would you be allowed to call them now with just double the, the phone support or double the email support bruh hire more people like you're being cheap we know it we know it like hire more people come on we strive to maintain relationships with our regulators and to cooperate fully with them we do not discuss or comment on our communications with our regulators sounds like nonsense to me but you know i mean i don't know i don't know i mean the fact that they have to put these little quotations in here and everything like that and you can't even show a real robin hood employee saying this okay can't even get a human to tell me the same thing that they just told Robinhood me. Robinhood has been criticized for making stock trading seem like any other game or app on your phone. But it seems that that's what the users are looking for. What they would probably need to do, two things. The, the first thing they could do is think about communicating risk in a more concrete fashion. In terms of a currency that people really understand, right? Hey, right now you're putting an amount... I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. I love... This should be... Every time you trade, risk assessment. This should literally pop up. Does this not pop? Why does this not pop up in the app? This is perfect. Literally, risk assessment. The estimated cost of this buy represents 45% of your current available funds. You're investing 45% of your current available funds into one particular stock. If someone saw this before they invested, they might think twice about investing like this. So yeah, they should include this. The risk assessment needs to be there. The risk that could also buy you a week at the Ritz Carlton. Bro, I didn't even I didn't even see the second part. For an estimated cost of this buy, you could also spend a week at the Ritz Carlton in Hawaii. <laughs> this is amazing. Why is this not in the app? Like, I this is a great. This is a great. Come on. To so say, hey, 
if this works out as well as your last trade is, you could make enough to go to the Ritz Carlton for a week, right? But making it come That would be amazing. They need to add this. The other thing that oh my gosh. do is literally insert sludge, which we call it just slows people down. I mean, we see this when your email pops up and says, hey, you didn't put in a subject line, or you put the word attached in here, but there's no attachment. So it wouldn't be that hard to put in those pauses. Yeah, that would be nice. Just a risk assessment. Just just something to say, this is what you're risking. This is what you could be getting. But if you make this money, you're good. If you don't make it... I mean, obviously, Robinhood, I don't know if they would do something like this because uh, this could cost them a lot of money. Like, the, if people saw the risk assessment, they'd be like, oh, no, I'm not going to invest. I'm not going to invest. And that would lose them money. And they don't want to do that, obviously. I mean, you're a business. At the end of the day, you're a business. You're, you're here to make money. So um, I would love it. I would love it if they did it. If they did this, uh, I'm letting you know personally, I would stay on the app also they still need to get that customer the customer service is the first thing they need to do i personally think and then get this but i mean all these people working at this company or however many people it is y'all need to figure this out because it's not even nothing to figure out cnbc literally just gave you the blueprint like just copy it that's it <laughs> that's it they, they literally gave you it looks perfect it looks like it looks like it's on robin hood already come on just saying Despite the Whoever edited that, perfect. Thank you. Related restrictions. Analysts we talked to say that this new breed of Robinhood trader is not going away. They've now discovered the stock market, and they're oh. likely here to stay. 100%. 100%. Never leaving the stock market. I think it, the, after discovering all this and how much money I can make and how easy I can make the money, um, like most people know, not going anywhere. It might not be on Robinhood, but I'll be investing forever for the rest of my life. Guaranteed. No question there. This was really just an eye-opener to me. And it's me. I can really see myself going forward with investing and teaching people how to invest as like a, just a normal thing I would do. It's, it's something I really like doing. So I've chosen personally to just keep a few thousand tied up into some stocks that I, I really don't think will hit Man, this zero is a PC ever. guy. I'm loving it. You see this PC in the background? I'm not just built it. I'm not yeah, this, this is my favorite guy on here. It's great. Robinhood is no longer the only game in town when it comes to zero commissions. That is now industry standard. Yep, and everybody. says that it puts some pressure on them to launch more banking products. That's something we've seen Robinhood yep. go into. I have the Robinhood debit card. Make sure you check out that it video. It does seem like they are trying to be sort of a one-stop shop for banking. Which they should be. The thought by some traders is that at some point, Robinhood traders, once they get a certain net worth, they might not feel comfortable trading on Robinhood and they'll, as they call it, graduate. That is yet to be seen. It's we'll see. I literally just said this earlier. I said this like what five minutes ago. I'm like, yeah, once I get a certain amount of money, if they don't fix what they need to fix, I'm gone. I'm going somewhere else, and it's just going to be that simple. And that somewhere else I'll go will be way more reliable. I'll be able to call somebody on the phone, not have an issue in the world, nothing to worry about. Robin Hood, you're making me nervous, but it's okay because I'm still here. But fix your stuff, and we won't have any issues. You don't fix it, then I'm gone. It's that simple. You won't have me, but... Hey, uh, I'm just one person, right? Too soon to tell, but that is one possibility that analysts often mention. It's like when you buy a car and it's like the most unreliable car ever. Not that Robin Hood is, but it has like its super quirky features. Same thing. You just kind of have to learn to live with. Yeah. But you learn to love that car at the same time. Yeah, I like do. I experience. really do love this app. Like, few months, and even just for simple trades. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about, bro. I think. Oh man. I, do see myself going that was such a great analogy because you know it's super easy as, and they are adding more and more i love that by the way the, the new features with the widgets and everything i didn't make a video on it it's not that big a deal but if you have the new ios if you have the new ios then you can add like robin hood widgets on your home screen i don't know if you knew but if you knew if you didn't know there you go maybe i'll make a video on it i didn't because i didn't think it was that big of a deal it only lets you see your portfolio basically and that's about it so i didn't think it was huge i mean you can just open the app it's not that big a deal personally but hey if you think it is you know go try it out hey it is what it is this is this is, this is a great video i mean it's 30 minutes but it's great of the relationship they're gonna have with the consumer given that i'm just nervous about editing it move up and down some people are gonna do well some people are gonna do badly if they don't prepare people for that they will lose them so yeah. it is actually in robin Hood's best interest to help to figure out how to effectively people for these eventualities. I'm excited. Robinhood right now has a lot to overcome, but if they come out of this on the other side, venture capital investors at least are betting that they'll become a major player in the brokerage industry. They what will be number one. Robinhood. If they pull off all the features that they showed here and the, get the customer service right, they'll be number one. It's no question about it. I don't see any reason why anybody would use any other platform. Um, yeah, I don't, why?
Why? You make it simple, you add all the features that are on the other platforms, you have good customer service, there's no reason to go anywhere else at all. It's that simple. The commission's model has finally caught the fancy of a whole new generation of investors. Because of a newfound love for stocks by millennials, the brokerage landscape will never be the same. Just like it was when E-Trade got its start 37 years ago. Growth is a very hard thing to control. And Robinhood's growth has been explosive. Explosive to the point where they're onboarding so many users and having so many concerns from so many different clients of theirs that you know there's going to be some hiccups along the way. Yeah. Just like any growing company. Yeah, it's going to be problems. Unfortunately, you just, you just got to come on top. Come out on top. I solve think them. Those hiccups get really amplified. There's a lot of players. And I saw that little Sam Riga Easter egg in there. So one of our core values is that participation is power. Yes. And I think that kind of just says it all. I'm excited, bro. Y'all don't understand. Like, if they can pull the, especially the wrist thing. The wrist thing is cool. I'm loving that. I'm loving that wrist thing. It's something that I really want that to be in the app, like, today. Yesterday, actually. Even the small people, because your accounts are not as big as the E-Trade. Those people, right? Those people can get a piece of America. A piece of a corporation. Robin Hood declined to be interviewed on camera for the story. I wish they didn't, but, you know, we'll get there. That was a great video. 100% recommend. I already liked it. I only saw like a minute and a half when I liked it, but either way, I would have liked it anyway. Um, sitting at over 95,000 views, and this video is sitting at over 52 minutes, so we'll see what it is when I edit it. Um, yeah, you already know what I think about Robin Hood. You already know the faults the upcomings everything how i feel i talked about it in this video i talked about it in my other robin hood videos either way stay tuned for more robin hood content i'm super excited that cnbc actually had me on cnbc so yeah huge shout out to sam he actually put me on for this video so yeah thank you so much either way if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit it with the like button if you didn't like it hit the dislike button twice check out some of my other videos check out the comments down below to get yourself some free stocks maybe robin hood maybe weeble wherever you want to you know get some free stocks at maybe m1 finance it doesn't really matter but that's kind of it i'm out dollar mike peace